Hello everyone, welcome to Thomas Podcast. I am back on this channel. So, I hope you've been okay. I had a so-so mm, day, but these things happen. You know, you have to live with the positive and negative. It have, it's part of life. So anyway, as promised today, I have, I'm sorry, I have a person, I guess that's going to come in one minute. So sorry, I'm sorry about that, George. Okay, so I have a special guest coming. He attended Fire Festival in 2016, I believe. And um, the festival was a scam. They were stranded in a, on an island, literally. No food, no water. Honestly, I was so intrigued about that story that I researched so much about it. And then I thought, I thought, no, 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 no. I need to find somebody that was there that can tell me that experience because I was really sick. Like, not in a good, positive sick, but in a really bad sick. So, anyway, I have to see where is my guest. Okay, wait, wait, wait. So my guest is William Needham Finley the Fourth. To join us, and I can't wait for him to tell us more about this messed up story. Okay, and as I said before, uh, oh wow, hello. Hello. You okay? Welcome, William. You okay? Can you hear me? Yeah. How are you? I'm finding you. You okay? Yeah, yeah. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Oh, nice one. Oh, so nice to hear you. How are you doing? Yeah. Doing oh, well. I'm doing this doing well. Crazy. It's nice. I don't know. I can hear you. Am I still freezing? A little bit, but you know what? As long as I can, we can hear you, it okay. will be great. Okay. okay. I have All a right. lot of people joining us. Welcome, everyone. So, William, introduce us. Uh, introduce yourself to us. Who are you? What do you do in life? Yeah. So, um, uh, this this whole thing I created, William Meadham Finley, was this uh, pen name I came up with. Uh, a long time ago, um, just to sort of do like satirical writing. And then over the years, it kind of transitioned into doing stuff on social media and whatnot. So I, uh, I have been doing that as a hobby and then went full time doing the sort of like writing, blogging stuff in 2016, right before the Fire Festival, which is what, uh, what I think people will will be tuning in for i guess so yeah went to all that sort of as a joke and um so yeah that's sort of how so uh tell us how did you find out about this festival can you tell us a bit more so you was looking for a nice festival to go my and buddy then you saw this. yeah my buddy mark is a big fan of like music festivals and whatnot and so he saw it first and reached out and was like, we got to go to this. This will be fun. And so it was Mark's idea. And uh, and I said, yeah, I'll go along with it because it'd be funny to sort of talk about like being an influencer, even though I wasn't an influencer. It was just something I could like <laughs> kind of joke about. And, um, and it looked like a cool trip, you know. So that was sort of how it started. Okay. So you thought it's gonna be a nice trip. You booked your tickets. Uh, how much did you pay for those tickets? Uh, all in, we we ended up getting like a like a VIP package because um, you know you'd get like all of your food and your drink and everything included. So we thought that'd be a good thing to like lock in. And I think it was about four thousand um, dollars. Flight, travel accommodation all that concert so for what we thought would be like four or five days in the bahamas it wasn't it wasn't too crazy so yeah i've, I've got to say four thousand for flight accommodation and food because i think that's what I offered that mm -hmm. that's a good deal so yeah. 
Yeah. When did you discover that it wasn't what it's supposed to be? When did you start seeing some red flags about this music festival? Um, I mean, leading up to it, they had made some changes and we'd gotten some emails about things. And um, we just thought it's a first year, first time festival. It's in Bahamas. That's to be expected. It's not like anything that was a big, huge red flag. Um, but, you know, once once you get there, um, I guess when we're in the airport, we saw that tweet by Blink-182 that was like, we can't perform at this because it's not up to our accommodations or something. And we didn't know what that meant. So we were like, okay, maybe they're just backing out, you know, whatever. And we get on the plane, we get down there. And once you like arrive at the site and just see the tents and the mattresses everywhere, that's when we were like, well, okay, this might not be ready yet. So, okay, you basically saw some changes like for emails and when you arrived, you saw the state. I mean, how can you tell us about the experience? Like when you arrived there and you see that site, what does that feel like? Talk us through it. Yeah, it was, it didn't really feel like it was real. It was like, this isn't it, right? Like this can't be the thing uh, that we thought we were going to. So, um, I just kept thinking, like, this is like the, the staging area. This is the like they're getting ready part. Like, there's surely we'll turn the corner and the real thing will be like ready. And so that was pretty clear that wasn't the case when we got there and we'd see Billy McFarlane just standing on a table, um, you know, in front of a long line of people. Cause I was like, I, you know, we knew who that guy was. And so, I think that's the guy who, like playing this thing, which was odd to me because it's like you go to a concert or something. Like, you go to Bonnaroo or something, but nobody knows who plans Bonnaroo. The the creator of that didn't stand on a table talking to the ticket holders. Like it, just, it didn't make sense. So I thought, all right, this this is not that's not right. what we signed up for. Yeah. So so Billy McFarlane, he basically was is the one who organized the whole thing. You never knew who he was, but did he say in the Fire Festival that he's the one that organized this whole thing? I mean, who was the main people that organized this thing? It was really him. You know, Ja Rule wasn't um, as involved. You know, he was just sort of like the talent, I guess. Um, okay. And I've learned later he really didn't have that much day-to-day -day involvement of it. So, yeah, it was Billy McFarland and, and a few other people that were putting the festival on and He'd obviously hired some event people and um and yeah i think they just were were way in way over their heads so he stood up there but what did he say to you guys did he say oh i'm sorry about what's going on or yeah he was just kind of like hey everybody hang on wait you know it'll get it'll get worked out it'll get worked out and um yeah he was just standing on that table and people kept coming up and saying like where's my tent or where do i go or where's my luggage and he'd answer question after question and then finally he just kind of shouted out like if you've got a such and such pass, just go get a tent. And that's when everybody went and ran and got tents. But he he was just sort of like putting the fire or trying to put the fires out over and over and over um, when we were there. And I just thought like, how is there not a like a bigger team of people? Like it was very surprising that there was a handful of people running around that were like wor working for the festival. Yeah, because the was crazy. concert there was no one there. There was literally no security. There was there was nothing. So it is it is pretty unsafe. All these people in a stranded island, no one to give you direction. No one. Apparently, there was no toilets. There was no water. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I don't know what to say. Oh, yeah, so, so it was crazy. I mean, didn't, yeah. didn't you say, okay, you know what, to your friend, let's listen. I believe that's what you want us to do. But let's go back to the airport because this is not a place to stay i mean did you guys stay there tonight no no that was what we did so you know um in the film it, it talks about how that weekend was like the regatta which is like a huge event down there and yeah. so all the hotel rooms were booked so we we called the hotels we were looking at airbnbs because we thought you know this sucks but we'll you know we're down here for four days let's go get a house or something um and we couldn't and there was nothing available so we just tried to make it back to the airport and that was sort of an ordeal of 
a buddy kind of sneaking into the main house headquarters and getting this. He he himself was talking to Billy and his assistant and um, got us on this flight manifest to get out. And so, yeah, once it became clear that it was not, you know, legit, we, we spent the next, I don't know, like 12 hours just trying to, to get out of there. So at least at the airport, you guys have got access to the toilet. I mean, did you guys have access to food, to water? Because... That must have been awful, like 12 hours without food or drink. That's a long time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I, there was a tent that had food, so we, we went and got some food. And it wasn't like I didn't get the cheese sandwich. That was... Um, <laughs> Sorry. You know, that, was, that image, some up the yeah. festival. I'm not, but that's it like, you promised really some gourmet food, then you got cheese sandwich. Yeah, it really did. Um, I, I had like normal, like chicken and pasta and whatnot so so we had food but it was just such a disorganized mess it wasn't like i'd say most of the people didn't know oh you go that way to get food and water so um yeah we had that but a lot of people didn't and a lot of people had been flown in you know at six in the morning and were just drinking all day and so there was a guy that passed out in the airport and oh. um you know like yeah that that was the you know it was like some of these people had by that point been there for you know 30 hours and it's like you know they've been drinking and out in the sun all day and there wasn't any water you know, you're in the airport but the airport store is like closed so it opened at like seven in the morning or something and i think everybody just bought like all the water and gatorade so um yeah yeah because yeah, we, yeah. Yeah. we talked it was a lot of people there like we're not talking a couple of hundred people we're talking like thousands of people went there yeah yeah i mean uh, thousands bought tickets i think you know they think you know anywhere from like 500 plus were, were there so yeah it was a lot of people and just in the airport they had started like i guess off at some point i think we were the last flight that night and so, i mean some people had to spend the night you know and that i don't know how like I don't know how that went, but, uh, so, but yeah. When you went back, you know, home, I think you were you were the one of the first who filed a, a, a complaint. So can you tell us about this process? Like, what? Who gave you the idea to say, look, this is fraud. You need to make a complaint. You need to seek uh, uh, justice for what happened. Yeah, my my good friend and attorney Stacy Miller um, was. Uh, aware of all this you know he he was uh somebody that i would talk a lot about in like the content that i did he was in like an advertiser sponsor of the the website that i did and so um i think i had sort of woven him into like some of the story stuff and i tweeted something like see you later fire festival you'll be hearing from stacy miller yeah. not even really thinking like that was kind of half a joke but like I didn't know what had really transpired at that point. And then, you know, we get back and Stacey's like, actually, this is fraud. Like, this is this, this is this. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. Okay. So we filed that suit. And, um, and yeah, so that, that was, uh, I don't know how long that took. But we filed that within a couple months of being back. And a bunch of other people filed suits. And there was a class action lawsuit. And um, so, yeah, there was a bunch of litigation or lawsuits around it because the thing is that um for me if i was billy my father right so you create this fire i think the ideas were there i think you had something but when i don't know at what point if you know what this is not gonna work let me refund all these people because it's not gonna work i mean why did why did it carry on this because everybody knew from the get-go you don't have you know any experience in music festival even the basic needs you know food toilets you know even places to stay you don't have the basics how can you not afford you know what let me stop and let me give these people back the money because that's what he did he put himself in a bigger problem than he could have said easily you know what guys i messed up here's your money back but the thing is that's the fraud because he had to keep that going because he had he owed money. I mean, it was a long, it was a lot of things because he owed money. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. Yeah. And 
And that was a lot of people don't like, I mean, I think the documentaries may have covered it, but people who may not have seen that or, or what, like, do you think, why, didn't, why don't you just cancel it or, or pull out like whatever like he, he owed one guy, I think $3 million. And if he didn't pay that 3 million by, you know, the Mar like May 1st, then like all this other stuff would happen. And so like the event was a few days before May. And so Billy's like, I got to pull this off. I got to, you know, at least make it happen and then hopefully you know get money from these people who are putting money on their wristbands and this and that so i, I just think he just didn't have a choice um in his mind like i'm gonna default on this loan or whatever and um that's probably what was driving most of his decisions so did they refund you any of this money back that all of the, this that you paid did they ever give you back that money I mean, just, no, no, we did you give back the money. No, we ended up, I mean, we had put it on a credit card, so you were able to dispute the charge, and so the credit card was like, yeah. But I mean, it's only totally, it's only totally financial, but emotionally, because if I wasn't there, I mean, the, did he think of the impact it could do to a person mentally? Like I've seen the documentary, you know, we're in the dark, no electricity, no nothing. Some people, could, yeah, could have this. I don't know, gone to lead to depression, lead to mental uh, uh, health. I mean, did you think about all of these sides? It's not, I mean, financially, of course, it's gonna hurt, but the well being side, did you think about that? I feel like probably not. You know, it seemed like a lot of what he was doing was just trying to build this company that he thought was, you know, gonna do all these things, and it didn't look like it looked like nothing was going to get in the way of that. So um, I think he didn't take any of that into consideration, probably. So, so how did you feel when he got caught and was going to go to prison? How, how did you feel? How did that make you feel? Well, that was interesting because it, we didn't know about all the, the fraud, the wire fraud and all that. Like, we just thought this guy is a young entrepreneur guy and he, you know, threw a festival and that sucked. Like, in nowhere did I think, Oh, you're going to go to prison for that. Like, I, I think, you know, had he not, like, I don't, you know, there's all sorts of angles to it, but, but, you know, you learn he's done all this, he's defrauded investors and he's done this and this. And then when he was charged with that, while he was waiting to be tried, he then other fraud. And it's just like, okay, this is like probably a sociopath or something. Like, this is not a normal person. Um, and yeah you know it's not like when, when i got back it's not like i was like i hope that guy goes to prison you know it's just like well this was ridiculous what you know what do you do now and um so then seeing the charges come out you're like oh well if all that this is sense. true like this is pretty horrible you know like because there are people that gave them you know their money like this one couple you know they gave them all their retirement money and then the woman in the bahamas like he like screw her out a hundred thousand dollars or something and it's like fortunately there was a gofundme set up and and she got paid back but like still have to go through that and it's, it's just like yeah it's just a very egocentric selfish you know sociopath yeah, <laughs> I don't know yeah. To go. because you know the interesting thing is that when you guys go back then you start getting emails about tickets to so many events so many places but it's right there's certain things you can't get access to so mm -hmm. i can't believe some people actually bought that because you, know, you, yeah. you called somebody you said oh i got that email what about you and it was the same thing so you you were smart you're like i'm not gonna put my money to that but unfortunately he made money again and, and we're not talking a couple of brands we're talking a hundred of thousands yeah yeah that was wild because it looked it just looked similar to like the communications we'd gotten and so i was like i bet somebody sold the fire festival email list like this is this is weird um and and sure enough i mean he was just going back to the list and trying to get people to to give him money for stuff but yeah like you said i think it was one hundred eighty thousand dollars that people had given him and um I don't even know where that stands, like, because he owes the government twenty six million dollars, um, and then there's our judgment against them, and then um, the stuff with the class action lawsuit that ended up that was a hundred million dollar class action lawsuit that ended up like settling for not a lot at all, like three million or something. So, 
um, he's got a lot of bills to pay. Yeah, well, uh, he went to prison for, I think, uh, for how long? Eight years, was it? It was a six-year sentence, but he only served four, and so he's out now. Yes. So, apparently, he wants to be a CEO again, and he said he wants to do another festival again. I mean, hasn't he learned his lesson? Like, haven't you yeah. learned that you defrauded these people? Do you think anyone going to trust you ever again? Yeah. Don't you think, before thinking about making a festival, how about let me work and pay all these people back? Yeah, you'd think, you'd think, but um, I don't know. I, I don't know what his thinking is there, but, uh, yeah, you, you know, you hope he's got some, like, people that could maybe provide a little more guidance. I don't know if that's the case, so and we'll have to see what happens. Do you think he has changed? I don't know. I haven't really kept up with, with that. You know, I was obviously involved with it a lot leading up to the documentaries and all that but since then i haven't really paid much attention so i mean it's tough for like some people like that, that they don't really learn or maybe they're not as capable of learning from their mistakes so i guess we'll we'll find out well we'll find out but i personally believe that i don't know that's my opinion but four years in prison wasn't enough I think yeah. it should have got a bit longer because we are talking about, you know, putting your lives at risk. This is more, for me personally, it's, it's more than fraud. You know, Strand Island with nothing, with literally nothing. Even apparently the connection, you couldn't even call for help. There was nothing you could do. That for me, yeah, a yeah. should have stand for at least 10 years. Four years, I feel like you're giving somebody a license to do it again and he, he comes out, oh, I'm going to do another festival. Oh, I'm going to do, I'm thinking, hang on, how about, you know what? I put my hand up. I'm going to do everything to repay all these people back. Fine, change that into, let me see what I can do. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't, personally, I don't think he has changed. I don't think he has learned his lesson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I, yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. There's a lot of, uh, it is, you know, it, I, I get how the internet and Twitter, I would have done the same thing if like something was, I would have been like making the jokes and all that. I, I feel like some of them were hilarious. Um, but you know, there were people that like were like the guy in the airport that was passing out and, um, you know, the ambulance had to come like that. I have no idea what it was like on the Island overnight. You know, it was not this like, oh, just walk to the hotel. Like you, you weren't in, you know, downtown exactly. New York and we can just leave or like you weren't in Miami and you can just leave. Like it was this undeveloped real estate property kind of in the middle of, you know, it, it just was not, it was not as safe as it should have been. So what, what was life after this experience? What, what did... What did you do after this? Because I know you've been, you were, uh, you appeared in the films, I think in one of them, and you also went to talk about experience in the news. So what did that do for you? Did, did I help you in any way to get a bit more, you know, social media presence? Did you find a way to use that bad experience in a positive way? Uh, uh, yeah, I think, I mean, it was, it was really interesting working. Um, I did the, the Netflix film and, the Hulu film, you know, people would reach out and say, hey, we saw your footage. And um, so I would give them what they needed and then actually ended up working with the, the Netflix director and, and his team a little bit more. And it was cool to kind of see the behind the scenes and like screen the film before it was out and like help with research and stuff like that. And just because, I mean, it was a thing I was interested in regardless i think it's an interesting story um so that was cool that was cool to meet those types of uh, people in that in that world and um then yeah it it, it was sort of like a, social media you got like more followers and stuff but it was kind of weird because the, what i do is like, like this satirical joke thing so like people in la aren't gonna understand 
uh, my jokes about like Raleigh old money stuff, but <laughs> like, I don't really care. You know what I mean? So it's just like, it's not like, I was like, oh, I hit it. Like, let's get any more followers. And like, it's, I kind of, it was what it was, but, um, but yeah, it was, I mean, I think like that part was the, the good of it. And, you know, if I can, anyway, anytime people reach out, I'm glad to like talk and do these types of things. Um, Thank because I know there's people are still interested in stuff. It's and it, it it feels like it never it never ends. But um, there's always something like Ja Rule will do something or, or whatever. But like, yeah, it was um, yeah, it was not like the best situation. But I think, um, you know, I think uh, uh, it was it was interesting. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing is that. You Okay, I don't know how to say this in a nice way, but sometimes in life you're gonna go through things that's gonna shape the type of person you are or you're gonna be. Because to be honest with you, you know, sometimes things happen for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe that's strengthening your character, your your well being. If you've been through that, you think I can go through anything. So you you can take away some positive, I believe, from that experience. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so for sure, for sure. My final question, as you know, I work as a teacher um, to inspire young people. This is what this is about. So what would you say to young people if they see those deals that are sometimes too good to be true? What would you, your advice be? Yeah, I mean, if, it, if it's too good to be true, it, it probably is. I think that's an old, like, a, an old saying. But um, it's, it's now, hot, like, like, it's harder than ever now to like vet things because it's like it is and it isn't because you have unlimited research with like the internet and you can look up all this stuff but it's also really easy to just fake stuff like just a few days ago mr beast had uh, an ai ad go viral somebody had made it seem like mr beast was offering like a, a phone or like i actually got it on tiktok myself and you look at it and it's kind of fuzzy you're like is my signal bad like and you kind of like oh this is ai like his mouth is just a little bit off but if you didn't know any better you'd click the link and sign up like oh i love mr beast i want you know i could see a seven year like i don't know how young his audience is but i could see people you know not just not realizing that that was fake so like it's it's just like you gotta i guess vet everything or like look into everything and and just kind of be careful with what you're what you're buying or you know these experiences you're going to like like that's the thing i, I got um fire festival like email alerts i said that up at one point that's just every day there's a new thing that's like such and such is the fire festival like of such and such and it's just this term now that's used for it for that but in a lot of those you you see and it was a scam somebody did this and it was a scam and it's a mix of like people who are like actually scamming and then people who are trying and then maybe they're biting off more than they can chew. But like, I guess the advice would just be like, you know, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. And also, like you said, I think more research, check everything, make sure all the details are accurate, really double checking before you buy anything or put your money into anything. So yeah. I want to say a big thank you yeah, for your time, you know. And at the end of the day, you come out a winner out of all of this. No matter what, Thanks. people say, if people are laughing at you, whatever. I say, listen, I lived it, and I'm stronger. So, yeah. well done, and thank you so yeah. much for your time, yeah. for your advice. And I hope I'll talk to you again anyway. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it's it. A pleasure. Have a lovely day. Right. Thank you, William. All right. Thanks a lot. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye.